What's going on, guys? The New York Jets blow out the New England Patriots 24-3, and it never fell close. Once they were up 14-zip, um, just straight up took care of business at home. Morgan Moses is the blood sacrifice in this one. Unfortunately, he goes down with a knee injury. Other than that, the Jets come away healthy. And Aaron Rodgers looked unbelievable. You know, he looked the first two games, it was like, Jets quarterback standards it looked amazing compared to what we've seen recently but this was genuinely as high level of quarterback play as, as you could see around the league final numbers were 27 or 35 for 281 two touchdowns no picks he's got five touchdowns to one pick on the season but he was cerebral he moved really really well uh I'm not gonna lie I was a little bit worried about that part of his game the first you know the, the week one he looked like he was hobbling around there out there like a senior citizen he was mobile he had 20 yards on the ground today he looked comfortable and, and moving out of the pocket taking some hits and just absolutely a freaking laser show uh unbelievable like unbelievable level of quarterbacking i don't know what else to say about it um and the thing is he is still working with like the timing right th it still isn't still right there with garrett wilson yet it's not quite there with mike williams yet. he's comfortable with lazard who seems to be having a bounce back campaign absolutely as somebody who's been very critical of alan lazard on this channel alan lazard seems to be a fine like uh role-playing option in this offense so far absolutely only has the one drop mike williams Rodgers starting to trust him more on those 50-50 balls as he gets more healthy and ready to go. Brees Hall and Braylon Allen, a really good one-two punch. Braylon running the ball better than Brees through the first three games. He's got five yards a clip, running hard. Brees Hall uh, heavily involved in the in the passing game. And Tyler Conklin's best game is a Jet. Uh, five catches for 93 yards. He seemed to be uh, a go-to guy on third down. And, yeah, they still – Rodgers and Garrett Wilson still haven't really clicked, and that was the, the – what we were predicting was going to be like the main driving force of the offense, but a lot of even distribution. I mean, Rodgers hit Conklin at five catches, Lazard for three, Mike Williams for three, Garrett Wilson for five, Brees for four, uh, Xavier Gibson for two, Ruck for two, Braylon Allen for three. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different pass catchers caught at least two passes in this game. Uh, yeah, absolutely love to see it. I thought the the offensive line, the, the pass projection was good overall on the play that Morgan Moses did get hurt. Tyron Smith got beat by speed a couple of times, but in general, it looks really good. John Simpson seems to be a really good signing. The interior trio really impressive in this game. The, the run blocking, that's something you have to go back and rewatch the game, but it was good enough for the Jets collectively to get, you know, four yards per clip and a rushing touchdown by Brees Hall. Um, defensively, the pass rush dominated. Seven sacks in this one. Uh, Will McDonald, awesome again. Uh, I know he's got a one-game head start, but right now he leads the NFL in sacks, baby. Five and a half because he's a good, because he's good at football. That's what a good football player would do. So nobody is surprised by that. Also had a tackle for loss against the run. Um, he quarterback hits pressures like the analytics are going to be super kind to Will. He's going to get double-digit sacks. He's going to get sixty-plus pressures because he's good at football, and that's what a good football player would do. Uh, but also some other guys eaten as well, like Michael Clemens had a solid game. I, they didn't. I'm looking at ESPN. They didn't give him credit for a half sack, but he was in on one. Of, he was in on one of them with McDonald. I remember for sure. So sometimes those uh, stats they kind of change uh, once they take a second look at things. But Quinning got one. Chuck Clark got one on the blitz. Chuck Clark also with a strips uh, with a, uh, a strip fumble, forcing a turnover. Um, Tack McKinley was abusing that backup left tackle pretty good. Leonard Taylor got in the game at the end, and he uh, had a half sack, as did Solly Thomas. So the Patriots have a bottom three offensive line, and the Jets absolutely made them pay for it. It kind of looked like what we were rolling out there last year on the offensive line. Um, dominant performance. Uh, you know, the secondary, the weren't tested much. Michael Carter ha has one he liked back. He almost had a pick six when they brought May in there. And Jeff Ulbrich, credit to Jeff Ulbrich. This was the, I'm willing to bet that this was the most they've blitzed since the defense has been good. So the last two plus years, I bet that was the most they've blitzed. Um, they, they were bringing it like a third of the time. Uh, not just a third of the, pat, like a third of the overall snaps. They were bringing extra guys and just trusting their corners and say, okay, let's, let's make their 
um, their wide receivers and Jacoby Brissett beat them, they couldn't do it. And honestly, it was a game where the Jets made some mistakes. The Jets had, you know, two 15-yard personal foul penalties. They had a couple of holding. It was eight penalties on the day, um, shooting themselves in the foot and, and missing a chip, missing a pretty short field goal by Greg Z. And you still come away 21 points on top. So huge, man. Now you got 10 days off. You have a mini buy to try and get some guys healthy, um, you know, work on some of those timing things, those chemistry things. And you come back at home against the Denver Broncos, and you should absolutely freaking wax that team as well and move to 3-1. and one. So you'd love to see it, and we'll talk all soon.